Today on Run It Back Philly, I have a special guest, and we're going to talk about everything in the Philadelphia sports world currently, because, you know, it took like two days off. Sometimes you need a little break from the chaos. Uh, we're going to talk about the Brooklyn Nets and the Philadelphia 76ers, and do we have a chance to compete? Do we need to make a trade? Stay tuned. It's going to be fun. This episode of Run It Back Philly is brought to you by the Teespring store. Click the link in the description. Get all the Run It Back merch, including this They Hate the Process t-shirt. Use the code RUNMY20 for 20% off. And I've been tired for a while. I need coffee. Buy me a coffee.com slash run it back. Uh, I have a special guest, Mitch Kofsky, today, who's going to talk to me with me about the Philadelphia 76ers and everything in that world. Mitch, what's up, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Excited for the Sixers tonight. We got to convert without Tatum, with them having t- not having Tatum. So, Oh, yeah. We definitely got to take advantage of that. Uh, we're going to get into that, too. I'm tired of this coronavirus thing and playing teams without their full roster and us playing without our full roster. And Have we, e- have we even seen this team with a full roster versus a above 500 team with a full roster? Like, at all this season. We haven't had a true test yet. I don't think so. And honestly, is Mike Scott even playing? Mike Scott? Uh, I don't remember. I think he was activated. I don't know. I never, I never know about Mike Scott. It's Mike Scott. I mean, I hate the guy. So. <laughs> Mitch is not a fan of Mike Scott. <laughs> Ever since Mike Scott lost the headbands, he's been... he's been. Well, he was he's all right this year. He's hitting some shots. All you can really hope for Mike Scott is to hit threes, honestly. Uh, I haven't been a fan of him ever since he started with the Sixers. Honestly. Really, I like yeah. his t- I like his tenacity. I like the fact that he's like he's like a Philly kind of guy. He's ready to fight when stuff goes down. I do like that about him. But any guy with emoji tattoos on his neck, you know, you better be scared of. He's not he's not scared of anything in the world. The first thing I want to say in this episode is rest in peace to the white Steph Curry, Dakota Mathias. I didn't get to say that yet. We released him. It was a very sad day. If anybody out there has any connections and can get me a Dakota Mathias 76ers jersey, please do it. <laughs> oh, my God. That Listen, the guy can shoot a little bit. I hope he gets a chance on another team. Uh, he can't, like I said before, he can't stop my five-year-old from getting to the cookie jar as far as playing defense. But he can shoot. I think I think Mathias could, could be on an NBA team. What do you think? So do I. I mean, he proved it with that clutch shot. What was that, against the Nuggets? Oh yeah, it was no, huge. Not- no, it was a it was a last game. We went into overtime with uh, somebody we shouldn't have been into overtime with the Heat with nine players. Yeah, yeah right. I mean that was clutch. Yeah, when was- you have that, you need like someone who can hit that big shot. Yeah. So that was it. He took my number. Like, give me his jersey too. <laughs> exactly, and that's a huge situation for a player with not that much like experience. I, I was seriously blown away when he hit that shot. I was hyped, and I don't know if you saw my live reaction. I think I was live on YouTube when it happened. Nah, I recorded a live reaction as soon as I hit. I'm like, damn, I might just it. Alright, so first question, and this is serious. Was James Harden wearing a fat suit at the end of his Houston Rockets tenure? I, I, I'm, I don't get it. This guy goes from fat to skinny like Jonah Hill. You know what I mean? The kid from Super yeah, Bad that was really fat, and then he was skinny in Wolf of Wall Street, and then he was fat again in War Dogs. Yeah, I know. I think he looks like Mark Henry. You know who that was? <laughs> yeah. Who that is? Yeah, the he wrestler. looks like Mark Henry right before. <laughs> yeah, there was a couple Honestly, memes. There was a couple memes with Mark Henry's face on there. Yeah, I actually met the guy. So, um, yeah, scary as hell. So I think um, he was really trying to sabotage his time on the Rockets, and I, maybe he was wearing like twelve T-shirts. You know, pregame. Because he shows up in yeah. Brooklyn and he looks, he has definition in his arms. He looks ripped. I don't understand what happened. I mean, if he was wearing a fat shoe, would they catch it in the locker room? Like, would they catch it anywhere? Well, James Harden had complete control over the Houston Rockets franchise. So he probably had, you know, his own security team outside of his own personal <laughs> locker room or whatever else. Right, uh, right. Do you think, 
the 76ers, as currently constructed, can compete with the Brooklyn Nets? Because I don't know if you watched the Brooklyn Nets game the other night, but two games in, James Harden has two 30-point triple doubles. It is, I mean, it's it's two of the greatest players to ever play the game on the same team, and I downplayed it. I didn't want James Harden on the Sixers just because I can't stand the way that he plays, but uh, I was saying, like, I'm not scared of the Brooklyn Nets. They're going to implode and all this stuff, but it looks scary, at least offensively, those two players being on the same team. It does. Defense, they don't have it. The Nets do not have it. Do they have anyone that can guard Embiid? That's my question. No, they do not. Exactly. No. Exactly. And I don't think they have anyone to guard, I can't believe I'm saying this, Simmons when it comes to the rack, if he actually does it. Yeah, if yeah, Simmons at a hundred at a hundred percent, and we're gonna get into that too because I, I'm I'm getting more on the on the this guy's just out of shape because he didn't have a full off season and rehabbing the knee and stuff. Because of the more I look at his plays from from years past, he even without him shooting the ball, he was so explosive getting to the rim. And this year, he just mm-hmm. looks like he lost a whole step in that department. But um, back to the Brooklyn Nets for a second. Uh, without Kyrie, they look like this, right? What do you mm-hmm. think is going to happen to the Brooklyn Nets when Kyrie Irving comes back? Because I think Kyrie Irving is going to come back like an uh, an angry five year old that wasn't invited to a birthday party, you know, and he's going <laughs> to rip apart the presents and like throw the cake across the room. I think I don't think they should even bring him back. I think they should try to get rid of him before he gets a chance to sabotage anything. Yeah, when uh, his p- interview, I forget what it was yesterday or something. He looked mentally defeated, Kyrie. Yeah. Like, I would not want him anywhere near my locker room at all during this time. Yeah, well, he looks he looks like he's focused on other things. And, hey, you know, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to have your opinion on things. And he's allowed to use his platform to try to change the country for the better or whatever is on his mind. But as far as a basketball team, he doesn't look focused on the game of basketball, period. Not at all. And not at all. I don't know if that's a good thing for, for the it's chemistry not. I it's just don't think he's all. I don't think he's ever been a good fit on any team really besides LeBron James team because he, you know, hey, be that guy that can score when it's not LeBron James turn to score, you know? Yeah, I can see that, especially with the Celtics, with them having Kemba now, that's a much better fit, I think. Mhm. So really like with him and James Harden and Kevin Durant, I think he just really takes shots away from those guys and I don't know. I mean, I guess it adds to your depth having another scorer on the floor, but uh, the whole thing is iso ball, honestly. Like them in 2K, honestly. Yeah, it is. But I do think James Harden is more of a pass, not pass first, but more of a passer than a Durant and a Kyrie. So he can really fit. Maybe in Houston and other teams, he just didn't have any players that he really trusted to shoot the ball. You know, like right. West Brick. Uh, but, yeah, James Harden is is. So far, it's only been two games, but offensively, he's blowing me away. Just showing up to a new team and dropping two 30-point triple-doubles. That level of talent is, like, unbelievable. To be able to dick around the whole offseason, come back whenever you want, tell a team you want to trade it, go to a new team, and drop 30-point triple-doubles in the best basketball league in the world. It's insane. It's like a gift that not many people have. I know. Can you imagine him in the Thunder when he was in that starting role? With that Westbrook and Durant. Yeah, I, I used to say years ago that the Thunder should have traded Westbrook first. They should have kept Durant and Harden. And now, look, Durant and Harden. And the Thunder yeah. on the outside looking in. Hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess, though. Uh, but, yeah, let's talk about the Nets' defense because they don't have anybody that can guard Embiid. They don't have anybody that can stop Simmons when he's at 100%. Ben Simmons can guard players one through five on the perimeter right he can at least slow down Kevin Durant he's the only player in the NBA probably who's long enough to have a chance at guarding Kevin Durant's jump shot uh the the Nets gave up 115 points to the Orlando Magic and only won by seven points and they gave up 123 to the Bucks and only won by two so yeah I'm not that impressed it's not like they showed up and blew teams out by 40 in two games right no no, I can actually see Tobias Harris go off on the Brooklyn Nets defense. I can see it. So, yeah, well, we're going to need – yeah. so to compete with the Brooklyn Nets with the roster currently constructed, we're going to need uh, shooters on deck. You know, we're going to need our players, Seth Curry. We're going to need a full roster, obviously. We're going to need Seth Curry to be scoring, Tobias Harris to be scoring, 
Ben Simmons at least giving us a 15-point triple-double, and Joel Embiid's going to need to have his, like, 35 and 15 type of average. Yeah. Especially if we would Danny end up... Green. And Danny Green, yeah. He, he needs to, you know, give us a solid outing and have, you know, hit those shots from the corner and not be the uh, 0 for 9 version of Danny Green. Yeah, especially if we end up in a playoff series against the Brooklyn Nets, that you know we would li- Embiid would literally need to average like thirty five and fifteen, I think. Yeah, I mean DeAndre Jordan can't hang hang with Embiid. What do you think is the best chance? Like, do you think this roster has the best chance, or do you think Daryl Morey makes a big time trade before the trade deadline to give us a better chance? A uh, big time trade. I really think we need a third star. I think Zach Levine is that guy. Even though we're not going to get him, I know the Chicago Bulls franchise, everything. They don't want to give up him for pennies. Or Bradley Beal. I can see that, too. Yeah, so you think – well, Bradley Beal – yeah, neither of these franchises are, are saying out loud, obviously, yet that these players are available. Mm-hmm. But when you have a player, especially Bradley Beal, reaching his prime, 27 years old, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 27, 28. Everybody so. in the league kind of knows, like, hey, you guys suck. And you're gonna have to trade this guy at some point. Like everybody knows that, right? So, do you think they do it? And do you think Bradley Beal gets the haul that I think he's gonna get? Like I'm thinking Bradley Beal is gonna get a, what J, what Houston got for James Harden, if not more, because he's four years younger. He's averaging 35 points a game. Again, not really a defender, but nobody cares. Nobody cared if James Harden was a defender or not. You know, people want that 35 points per game scorer on their team. Yeah, I mean, he needs to go to a contender, Beal. I feel bad. So if we could get Bradley Beal, I would give up. I can't believe I'm saying this. I would give up Shake. I would give up Seibel and a couple second rounds, maybe a first. Ben Simmons is in there, right? Oh, yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that. I don't think that moves the needle. Shake, Thibel in a couple seconds. No, um, sorry. So take out... Cyborg then then put Ben in sync. If they can make then a trade, scoring. yeah. If they can make that trade and not give up Tyrese Maxey, I'd be happy because I think Tyrese Maxey can turn into an absolute star in the next like four or five years. He is. He has the AI capability. Yeah, and I, I would have I would have been disappointed if Daryl Morey would have done it for James Harden, but then James Harden would have showed up and dropped a thirty five point triple double on night number one, and I probably wouldn't have been that disappointed anymore. You know, you got. I mean, at the end of the day, if they do say Ben Simmons, Tyrese Maxey, and two first round picks, it's going to suck. But you want at the end of the day, we're trying to win a championship in the next four or five years, and that's kind of what teams give up for a superstar, right? Yeah, got to give up the whole bag or like a big chunk. Yeah, I, uh, that would suck. I don't want to give up Tyrese Maxey. I just think he has a higher upside than uh, a lot of people are, are you know, yelling at me for saying they should trade Shake Milton because they love Shake Milton. I love Shake Milton too, but I think Tyrese Maxey has a higher upside in general. He does. And I just said I would give up Shake, Ben Simmons, and a couple first. I and, said that. Yeah, and uh, as far as Zach Levine goes, Good scorer, not 35-point-per-game scorer, but 25-point-per-game scorer. Uh, he's on a level of, like, a Jason Tatum, I would say. He's on a level of, like, an all-star, but not maybe not not a superstar. Um, so maybe, you know, if, if Bradley Beal's not available or they want too much and we say, hey, we have a chance to keep maybe Ben Simmons and get Zach Levine from Chicago uh, by giving up Shake Maxey and... I don't know, a couple picks or something like that. People in the comments, you know, go ahead and leave your trade ideas instead of ripping me for whatever I'm coming up with off the top of my head here because I'm just throwing stuff out there. But, uh, yeah, I think you could maybe get Zach Levine and keep Ben Simmons on the roster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. But and the thing about I love about Zach Levine, he can take the shot when you need him to. Like, he can take the clutch shot when we need him to. He absolutely can. And, and this team, like you saw in that last game, there's not a guy on this team that you're like, okay, it's a one-point game, it's the fourth quarter, who gets the ball? You know what I mean? It's like it, it went to yeah. Tobias Harris, and first it was Ben Simmons trying to force it to Danny Green in the corner for a turnover. Uh, I don't want Danny Green being the guy taking the last shot either. 
Because when the pressure was the highest either. for him, when he had the chance to hit to set the record, he missed six in a row. No, no, I was, dude. If he <laughs> hit like, like one, one of those, just one. <laughs> did you see Mark Zumoff on, on Broad's channel? Yeah, I did. He was asking Mark I Zumoff did. about that, and he, it was so funny. He's like, he missed six in a row, and I was screaming every time for the record, for the record. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Oh, my oh God. man, that's funny. But, uh, yeah, then it went to Tobias, and, like, I like Tobias as a player, nice piece to have and stuff, but I don't think he's a guy either that should be that should be the one-on-one, game-winning shot kind of guy either. And Shake Milton's the reason they were in that game. So I was yeah, like, why right. doesn't Shake have – give Shake the ball. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, we just need that closer. I mean, if Tyrese Maxey somehow could develop into that, we're good. You can't use that now. Yeah, yeah. Tyrese Maxey's not that now. It would be it would be very nice if Tyrese Maxey could turn into that. I don't know if he'll ever be that either. I think he has a chance to be a really, really good point guard. I don't know if he should be a go to one on one game winning shot kind of guy either, but you you never know with the next, you know, guy has a the kid has a lot of years ahead of him. He does, he does. And I still can't believe he fell to us. I still can't believe that. Yeah, for him to fall to twenty one was crazy, and I, I don't I don't watch college I don't watch much college basketball, and I didn't watch a lot that year at all because I can't even keep up with like what season it is and when the tournament is if there is a tournament I don't know what year it is hardly you know so I didn't even know like a college basketball season happened. I, I it I happened it, it, it happened right before coronavirus, and then everything shut down and the tournament didn't happen. But I I forgot all about the college basketball season even happening before that, and I didn't know much about any players that were. But uh, RB was freaking out about Tyrese Maxey, and I, I got to give him credit for that. He was on top of it. He was screaming when he fell to 21. He was. I know. I'm going to watch RB's draft videos probably until he retires because they were that was amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> Shout out to RB. The, the live draft videos, that was fantastic. Uh, so my thoughts on Ben Simmons, and then I want to get your thoughts on Ben Simmons because I'm getting more towards the he injured his knee, he had rehab, and then he had like a month until the season started, what feels like a month. Maybe it was two months. I don't know. And he comes out, and he just looks less explosive, less athletic, but he also looks mentally more like timid, scared to take it to the rim. I don't know if he's – if it might be a combination of both. Like maybe he's um, – I'm not saying he's injured because he wouldn't be playing if he was injured, but I think he's out of shape, and the combination of him being out of shape – Plus, maybe he's still scared of like landing on that knee or landing on or whatever. Maybe he's in his own head, like about being hurt. And uh, I don't know. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting to recently. Because the more I watch his old videos and how explosive he was, it didn't matter if he shot the ball or not. He was. You couldn't guard him one on one. He'd take one dribble and blow by anybody and slam the ball and scream. And we just haven't seen that version of Ben Simmons this year. But you know. I guess it's it's we early in the season. Mm-hmm. I think it has to deal with Doc Rivers as well because he said he came out in yesterday's press conference that um, he doesn't care if Ben Simmons shoots the ball. So is that putting into Ben Simmons' mind and be like, should I shoot this? Should I not? What should I do with the ball? Yeah, I think it has to do with the coaching staff. Yeah, I think maybe Doc Rivers was looking at like Brett Brown and saying, all right, I don't want to do it that way. I don't want to talk about it to the media and give him that kind of uh, pressure. He's like, I'd rather, I think he's thinking, like, I'm going to tell the media, you guys keep talking about it. I'm not going to talk about it. And then maybe in practice, they're working on it because he's Sam Cassell and these guys say that they're working on it. And it is becoming more like Ben Simmons. He shot a three or maybe two in the last game, uh, airballed one by a mile, but. He, he's still sh- at least he's shooting the shot, you know, and I think he's more casually pulling up for three than he was last season. Uh, yeah, like maybe they're working on it, and Doc Rivers just doesn't want to tell the media. But I don't know. It's just like getting bad. I was saying this from the beginning: have Curry work with them. I mean, Curry's averaging like what sixty percent from three right now. Yeah, it's wild. I w- I went back and rewatched that Cavs game where he had 34 points in three quarters, and he was just totally unlocked. He was like, he had 
a couple fadeaways from the post. He had a, a wide open three that he shot. He was just all over the place. And it's like he was playing completely free and with this confidence that I can do whatever I want and I can shoot the ball. And then Brett Brown sabotaged it by getting rid of, uh, what's his name, Trey Burke, because he was like, well, that, that worked way too well together. I don't want that. I don't want that much I success. I don't, I don't, you know, but we haven't seen that. I think, uh, I think it might be more mental with Ben Simmons. Like somebody needs to unlock this guy and get him to be like, I can shoot. I can dominate. I can lead this team. Like I've seen him in high school tape and college tape. He was shooting threes. He was shooting everything in high school and college and the NBA team. It's just like, what happened? Yeah, I just I don't understand. I just think it's pressure, and then he's sitting back like, well, if as long as I'm like a great defender and a great facilitator, then I don't have to work on. I don't have to try to shoot the ball in a game. I can just do this. And the people that are on the the extreme like Ben Simmons defense, you know, are now saying, well, he has more assists and rebounds than Draymond Green in his first three years or something like that. You, you I, me personally, I don't think we drafted Ben Simmons to be a Draymond Green. No, we didn't. We drafted him to be a LeBron James X. Yeah. And he's not even that without a jump shot. Right. And if he is Draymond Green, that's valuable to have, but that's not my argument. My argument is we needed a superstar after tanking for three years. We didn't do all that to get Draymond Green. That's what I'm saying. And I just think he's kind of taken a cop out. Like, well, I don't have to try to work on my game. Uh, I can just do this. I can just be a good defender and a good passer, and and that'll be okay. And I can go cash my check, my hundred and seventy million dollar contract. You know, I want more. You sure do I. I think we all want more. And you saw my Twitter video. You actually retweeted it, and I actually said, "Step the e up." Yeah, that <laughs> went viral. That was a great. That went viral. That was great. It went viral. Yeah, I got like four hundred views. <laughs> there, nice. There. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was great. And it's true. <laughs> it's true. This is not enough from a from a number one overall draft pick. Uh, but, you know, I guess I got to give him till halfway through the season after a knee injury uh, to see if he's as explosive as he was before. But in four years, it's actually five years. You know, he missed his first season, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When he broke his foot right after Summer League, we were like, okay, Ben Simmons has a whole year to work on his jump shot. He's going to come back year two – and he's going to be shooting threes. He's going to be shooting mid-ranges. We're in year five now, and he still won't shoot the damn ball. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm happy he shot two last game. I, I am, but it's just like it comes to the point where it's like I don't want to talk about two jump shots. It's got to be at, like, at least three, maybe four. Yeah, and you can. The thing is, you got you have to work on it in the game. You can work with Sam Cassell. You could work with Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan at the same time in practice. It doesn't matter. You have to work on it in a game. You have to get comfortable shooting it in a game. You can shoot it in practice and pregame as much as you want. You're in year five, and teams can still guard you with Kelly Olynyk, fifteen feet away, hanging out in the paint. You know, making eggs and bacon, like brewing coffee, playing like thumb wars with his teammates. Literally, you don't have to guard Ben Simmons. When That's why the Miami yeah, Heat had so much success in those two games with only nine players. Because you, if you defend him the right way, you just put a center on him and back him up 20 feet. I know, especially, you said this plenty of times, especially four and five. It's four and five right now. Yeah. And it's just like, we have this dominant force. It's like, not there for offense. Yeah. And that's what good teams do against him. And then when he plays a bad team like the, like somebody else that doesn't guard him that way, like the Charlotte Hornets maybe, they guard him up front with a point guard and he looks better. But when it comes to the playoffs and you're playing teams that know how to play defense, they're going to guard him with the center 15 feet away like, like the Celtics did with Aaron Baines and like the Miami Heat are doing with Kelly Olynyk, and it's not going to be good. It's not. It's not. I remember when LeBron James did that. He was like all the way underneath the net. Yeah, and he, for, he and he actually shot it that time. Why'd that say running out of I don't know. I got an alert on Zoom for know. some reason. Uh, yeah, totally. I got it. All right, so we'll talk about the Celtics Sixers tonight, and then we'll be up out of here. Um, the Celtics versus Sixers tonight and Friday. They don't have Jason Tatum tonight. <laughs> right. Do they have Jason Tatum Friday? I don't know. I don't think so, but I don't want to ruin and I don't want to say anything. No. I didn't even really read about what happened to Jason. Is that another COVID-19 thing? Yeah. COVID tracing again. 
I would rather postpone this thing for like two months and come back and try again. Honestly, I don't even think that's much. Maybe two and a half. Honestly, it's getting too much. It's just nobody's playing at full strength. What's the point of it? Like half of this season is kind of pointless. Mm -hmm. It is. It really Uh, is now. All right, well, uh, so who's going to guard Joel Embiid for the Boston Celtics? Who they got? Christian Thompson. They got Aaron. Who else? Yeah, I don't know. I guess Tristan Thompson has to do it, and Joel uh, fouled him out when they played the Cavs. I'm, I'm pretty sure last time, or last time Joel Embiid played against Tristan Thompson, he fouled. I don't remember what team it was, but that's no competition. Um, what else do you think you're going to see tonight? Seth Curry's back. Yeah, Seth Curry's back. Uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, going around, pick and roll, pick and pop. He's the perfect guy along Ben Simmons. We're going to see everything from him. Yeah, and I think we it underestimate means, his value. At least, you know, it, me getting all pissed off about losing to the Memphis Grizzlies and whoever else, um, we're, I totally underestimate Seth Curry's value to this team because we need that 18 to 20 points spreading the floor guy. Yeah. And maybe with him back, that will show Ben Simmons, okay, I can step up now. I got someone who I can kick it out for a three, guaranteed. Yeah. Maybe he'll step it up. And it adds to our depth because then you bring Maxi back off the bench and Shake back off the bench and all of that. Um, I know Maxi's been starting at point guard the past couple games with Seth out. Do you think he's back in the starting rotation and Maxi's back coming off the bench? I think Maxi will come off the bench. I honestly see that. I can see that spark from him. And Cork might be back too. And I can see him like spreading the floor out off the bench as well. Oh, yeah, Korkmaz is back, too. I, I've been saying I want Isaiah Joe to have Korkmaz's minutes. Um, I love Korkmaz, but whatever takes a team to win, I'm fine with. Yeah. I just think Isaiah Joe is more consistent shooter. He just looks like when he shoots it, I'm like, all right, that's going in. Like, I don't yeah. get that feeling from Korkmaz. Unless he's hot. Like, he's, like, hot and cold. If he's hot, I'm like, oh, this guy's making everything. Yeah. It's the same thing with Mike Scott. Same exact thing. Yeah. They're both freaky shooters. Yeah. Same exact thing. Well, Danny Green, too, I guess. I guess everybody. <laughs> yeah. Seth is pretty consistent. The rest, yeah, pretty streaky. Uh, what else about the Celtics tonight? What do you think you're going to see from Ben Simmons? Hopefully he'll back down someone who's smaller than him. <laughs> like when he was <laughs> up against, uh, what's that guy? Grayson Allen, he didn't even do anything. He had... Tyler here. No, he had uh, Duncan Robinson in the post and wouldn't do anything. He had somebody even smaller than that, Chris Chioza. Um, I forgot about that. Oh my god! Against Brooklyn, or was he playing for? I don't remember. Chris Chioza. <laughs> Who knows? Um, Who knows? All right. So yeah, my camera died. So I'm just gonna. Oh, no, I'm not gonna bring that up because you can see my walls. Um. Yeah, that's all I got, man. Give us all your thoughts in the com- in the comments. Uh. This is Mitch Kofsky, ladies and gentlemen. Follow his YouTube channel, uh, Mitch MK, Philly Take with MK. It's Philly Talk with MK, but it's just Mitch Kofsky on YouTube. Philly Talk with MK, yeah. Mitch Kofsky on YouTube, and follow him on Twitter at... Mitch Kofsky, yep. Yeah. Mitch Kofsky. Thank you for watching, listening to Run It Back Philly. Tune into the Sixers-Celtics game tonight. Again, give me all your thoughts and comments in... Give me all your thoughts and opinions in the comments. I'm not good today. I need more coffee.